So hi, I'm Stephen Lewis. I work for a Fortune One company called Walmart. I'm also a co-founder of a startup called Rendered Perception. And I'm here to talk to you about uh, an e-commerce to brick and mortar customer experience using augmented reality. So just a little background about myself. I started an augmented reality development team about two years ago, uh, mid-2016. Um, so I was tasked to do some augmented reality. Um, so I did that. So two months later, um, I built a, um, a modular setup because I was mostly working on uh, associate experience. Um, and with that, we have over 2 million associates, so therefore it makes sense. <clears throat> so that went pretty successful. I showed that at AWE last year, um, that and some other different demos, um, such as um, you know, advanced modular audit, um, some different, you know, picking, stocking, some real basic use cases. Is there, just a quick question, uh, are my notes going to come up? No notes? All right, I can wing this, that's fine. I'm, I'm good at winging it. <clears throat> All right. So let's talk about the, in my opinion, the current consumer AR retail landscape. So there's really five big things going on. Um, general use cases, and you can mix and match them. These are not all inclusive, but generally speaking, you have 3D object in a space, typically using SLAM technology. You have a product finder, various ways of finding your product. So guide me to the product, there it is. Graphic overlays on a product or shelf. Um, so basically, uh, if I pick up, like for instance, that blipper um, image there of a ketchup, if I see it um, and then I use my augmented reality experience, it opens up, maybe shows you um, some interesting things. Uh, try before you buy. You saw some of that earlier uh, if you were here about um, uh, with the Lowe's guys. They're really good at that. Um, they have some pretty cool things on like furniture. Um, and then we got, you know, Modi face makeup, um, see product colors, changing things. And then of course, marketing, very popular of course. Um, dragons, superheroes, um, or even the bottom right, that was an actual Walmart one made by Current Studios, the uh, Black Panther um, experience. Um, so that's pretty cool. So what I would like to talk about um, these five use cases is what else can we do, right? Um, Army Rally is still pretty early technology in my opinion, um, but it's definitely coming along a lot faster and faster. So what else can you mix, maybe mix some of these things? Um, just what else can we do that would be very useful for consumers? Um, because they're there for a reason, right? They want, they're interested in your product. Maybe, maybe they don't know about your product. So if you use, for instance, the marketing, you introduce them to a product. But is it really like a staying experience, right? So what if you as marketing, you show them this really cool product, but then they see it and then they're done. So it was a one-time use. So what you want to do is make experiences that they can use over and over, and it's useful to them, right? So here's a use case. What if we did an actual integration of an e-commerce experience in a physical retail environment? So my, my background, of course, um, I spent about eight years, I've been at Walmart for about eight years. Um, I did a lot of stuff such as RFID technology um, and cloud-powered technologies. Um, so when I saw, so a lot of my experience is from the store side, not the e-commerce side. So I'm from Arkansas, I'm not from California. So this use case was very compelling to me is, how do we get those e-commerce experiences in a physical environment? Because a lot of people shop today in an e-commerce experience, such as your dot-coms, you know, your, your Walmarts, your Amazons, you know, all of that good stuff. And a lot of that experience is driven by I want it just to come to me. I want to be able to filter it really easily. I want, you know, hopefully the best price I can get. Um, I may not get all the, all the things I really want from a physical experience, but it's fairly, fairly a good experience for a lot of people to do the e-commerce route. Now, if you were here at the, the, the retail panel just earlier, they were fantastic, by the way. Um, they talked a lot about how many people are still going to the stores, and it's a lot. I mean, a huge amount is still going to the stores. So when you walk into a Walmart, it kind of looks like that. So how do you make it a more enjoyable experience, a useful experience, right? So what could be possibly 
a killer application for augmented reality. So what if I tell you that we take those two things and we smash them together, right? So here is a prototype we built about April last year. So it takes a while to get through patents and legal, but I can now show this to you <coughs> to do that experience together. So here, um, we partnered up with uh, L'Oreal, got some products, very skew intensive area, skincare. And let's just say I choose with the filter criteria, um, I choose and it narrows down and filters out what you don't want to see. That's kind of like an e-commerce experience. Um, you don't hear the sound, but you can talk to it, kind of a natural language processing, help you filter it down. Um, so you just see an experience. Now again, this is a prototype, single developer built this in three weeks. Uh, but just imagine, of course, what else you could do. So he filters it by price, he gets it down to one product. So watch what he does. So he sees it and he touches it. So he basically said, I want this, tell me about this. So it takes it to our e-commerce site to get your, um, you know, your, your price, um, your reviews, what people are saying. Is it available in stock? Because it may not be there physically, right? It might be in the back of the store. So there's a whole lot of integration you could do there. So you come back to the experience. So that's really, when I mean physical to digital, I mean it literally, smash them together. So thoughts about this prototype. <clears throat> so there's a lot of things that we didn't build for the prototype, because we just wanted to show what's possible, what could be built, and the technology is ready today. So we did the most minimal criteria to build it, but it could do a lot of other things. It could do things such as, endless aisle experience. It can do product groupings or substitutions. So for instance, if I'm filtering out something here, but I got 20 feet of skincare products, I can slide the, you know, the care products over into the, the area that I'm looking at right now that match the filter criteria, right? <clears throat> analytics, there's a lot of analytics you could do as a retailer or a brand. When you actually have someone with a mobile device or a headset in the future, looking at your products, and they're, and they're basically seeing how, how long are you gonna stare at this? Because a lot of um, retailers today try and guess your dwell time, you know, through various methods. Um, how long are you staying here looking at products? Do you really need help? Are you confused? Is the product out? So with this, you can actually basically say, what are they looking at? Are they looking at just these 10 products, 20 products? What are they looking at? There could be a whole lot of analytics that would be helpful there. Crowdsource indirect audit. So this one I'm a, I'm a fan of. So basically, are you out of stock of your products? Are your products in the wrong position based on your planogram? Well, the customer won't know or care, but the retailer certainly will. So instead of maybe sending a robot up and down the aisles to take pictures, they're already taking a picture. Is what? 30, about 30 pictures per second, right? So you just kind of grab a few of those and just check to make sure your, your products are on the shelf. So you can do a whole lot of things with this capability, um, especially if your suppliers can um, build into their item file, their uh, attributes that might be interesting, such as what you see there. So that doesn't really exist today in, in retail, um, where you have like very specific information of, is it anti-sagging, anti-wrinkle, moisturizer, day, night, a lot of things like that. <coughs> Now, just, I'm going to talk briefly about the technology here. Um, this was a very simple technology demo. Um, so we use these, you see the markers, the A, B, C. We used, you know, AR kit, um, toolkit six beta back then. Um, this was an Android device. So nothing special, worked pretty good. Now, from the technology perspective, what you'd want to do is, if you knew you were at this aisle location, and you know you're looking at these products, you would just, hit the service and it would give you all the information and images, right? So if you heard from the previous panel, boy, they talked about a lot of good things. Um, getting images for products is a problem. That content for all the images, especially for Walmart, when you have millions of products, right? Uh, it's just the endless amounts of data and there's no way you can fit all that image data on your device locally, right? So you're gonna need some interesting things there to kind of tie it together. So the last thing here, <clears throat> people-centric approach. So we talked a lot about 
um, the c consumers, and I like to think about people in general, consumers and associates, the workers. Um, so really it's about tools. So that's kind of the theme right here. It's about tools. What we need to do is build tools that are useful to people. You don't want to build something, spend millions of dollars on something, and they, it's a one-time experience. Now that one-time experience may be great, it may be amazing, and it may actually get them to buy your product. But if it's a tool, you want them to come back and it to be useful to the people. So a lot of the programs and applications that we think up here at Walmart, um, we've been thinking about what's useful to people, whether it's the workers or the consumers. And we try to make sure that we build it so that it works for everyone, not just the one-time use, but for a continuous use. Um, and, and one thing like that, um, like the, the prototype you saw, that would be very useful, not just for skincare products, but any skew intensive area, think of like fishing lures, right? That's a, just a, a nightmare of an area, right? A bunch of little tiny fishing lures. And I don't know anything about fishing, um, but what if I um, know that the lake that I like to go to um, and I wanted to fish, they have a lot of big mouth bass. Well, what's the fishing lure that's good for big mouth bass? Well, I wouldn't know. Maybe the most shiny object, I have no idea, right? Um, so what you need to do is, um, for like scenarios like that, is if you can think of different ways to use your product or get information that normally a human would ask, for instance, me, if I was in the aisle asking someone, what's the fishing lure for a big mouth bass? And they may or may not know. But even if they did know, they would be like, which one was good, right? They may have their personal preference. So what you could do is if you can have, if there's a defined criteria, again, I don't know anything about fishing lures, um, that's for sure uh, very specific, put that in your item file data and show them an experience that they can use over and over again. So tools, because people just want to get something done. That's why they use applications, right? Um, generally speaking, again, there's always the entertainment factor. I do love entertainment. But when we're talking about enterprise, <clears throat> and the consumers, and even the workers. They got, they're trying to do something. They're trying to accomplish a goal. And what you want to do is help them with that goal and make sure that it's an easy experience for them. I believe that's all I have for, for my presentation. So questions? Uh, any questions from the audience? Or you can take uh, one of the two here. Um, on your monitor from Slido. And I'll, if anyone raises their hand, here we go. Sure, let's go through it. <clears throat> How closely is Walmart working with Jet e-commerce team to bring MVPs like the one shown to regional or national scale? So that's very interesting. You, you singled out Jet. Um, so Jet, um, so like if you're talking about just the thing I showed right, right then, that was really about brick and mortar and bringing the e-commerce experience here. If you're talking about Jet, they're an e-commerce site. Uh, so what you would do is you'd probably want to find an AR experience that people would use in their home, such as the furniture demos, things like that. And a lot of those original um, five things I said, a lot of them are actually getting commoditized today. I, I didn't mention this earlier. Um, but even things like placing that 3D object or furniture in a space, they have tutorials that you can do in 15 minutes just to do that. So things are getting a lot more commoditized and easier for people to do. So I'm sorry, I may not be able to answer that question exactly. Uh, but yeah, Jet definitely has their own um, AR, VR things they're, they're working on for e-commerce. Next. Is AR the future to the CPG corrugated displays from Walmart's perspective? What barriers do you see? I would tell you, I probably can't speak for Walmart overall, but um, those are still very powerful for, not everyone has a really good mobile device. And I would say from the Walmart's perspective, the core people that go there to shop may not have the most fancy and expensive devices to do a lot of really good experiences. Um, so you're still gonna have your traditional uh, you know, corrugated displays, um, things like that. Um, as far as, yeah, barriers, again, people with their devices. 
Um, or if you ever decide to, as a company, maybe get some devices that you can hand out as people walk in, that might be interesting. Or even have a little robot with, you know, you can kind of watch and it shows you interesting things. That might be interesting. Next, let's see here. What insights can you share about AR performance? For instance, how long until an acceptable amount of Walmart shoppers have AR ready phones? Oh, just what I talked about. So when you're talking about AR performance, I'm assuming you're not specifically talking about the technical performance, but the KPIs, right? <clears throat> so I would say traditionally from a lot of my experience, I have targeted the associate experience first because we have so many people in the devices. As far as consumers go, it's kind of a mixed bag. Um, the technology and the hardware is catching up all the time. Now, it depends on the experience you're trying to provide, right? If you're trying to do a really basic experience, or maybe you're showing a video or an image overlay, things like that, you probably don't need very advanced hardware. But if you start to need something like a product finder where it can guide you through the store and it can really like highlight and show a bunch of cool graphics and overlays, you need something a lot more beefy. Uh, we have one more from one more. This gentleman here in the audience? Sure. And then we have to cut, cut it then, okay? So how do you work with new technologies that are outside of the Walmart, do you have a not invented here kind of mentality or is it oh, no. easy to bring in new technologies? How do you do that? Um, I would say the simplest answer to that would be we have a, uh, a company that we spun off last year called Store Number 8. And what they do is they go to a lot of startups and different companies and review what technology is available, um, maybe their future path. And then some of them, you know, they'll bring them in and we'll, we'll review. Um, again, store number eight is kind of a separate entity from the Walmart, um, roughly. But even in Walmart, we have our own uh, people that will go out and talk to different vendors and bring technology or even, um, um, you know, consultancies. Um, so we're not a, we're, we're very um, big at you know not inventing here um, because we don't have I would say a ton of developers spending um, a lot of time on things like this. Um, so what we do is uh, we do um, bring in a lot of people to to help us with things like that. 